Hello everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. I have a Toyota Highlander right behind me, which is one of the cars that we own. And so we know this Highlander very well. But one of the most exciting news yet to come, or soon to come, is the introduction of the Grand Highlander, which is more than just a stretched version of this Highlander. I know that most of you guys might assume that uh, Grand Highlander was designed by simply taking the Highlander and stretching it. Well, actually there's a lot more involved in engineering when it comes to designing the new Grand Highlander based on the current Highlander. So let me explain to you as an engineer exactly what happens when you take the Highlander to produce the Grand Highlander. Welcome back. So here is the normal Highlander, which actually isn't that small to begin with. It's quite a bit larger than the RAV4, which we also happen to own. But the Grand Highlander is quite a bit bigger and therefore much more exciting because it's also very different in terms of design. What most people don't realize though, is that the Grand Highlander is not just a stretched version of the Highlander. In the same way that maybe Lexus RX was, because as you know, uh, in the past, Lexus had an RX and RXL, and the RXL was virtually as identical to RX, but stretched somewhat in order to accommodate a larger rear seat. But for the Grand Highlander, Toyota took a very different approach because it literally changed everything to do with the Highlander. And so for all intents and purposes, as far as I'm concerned as an engineer, the Grand Highlander and the Highlander are no longer the same car. It is not just a stretched version of the Highlander that we see right here. And why is that the case? Well, let me explain to you exactly what's going on. First of all, I think what Toyota wanted to do is introduce a car that can really compete in the current marketplace that's saturated by very popular three-row SUV like the Kia Telluride and the Hyundai Palisade. And they knew that if you just took this um, Highlander right here and simply literally cut the back of it here and stretch it a little bit, it wouldn't be good enough because the design is getting outdated. It's not a particularly great looking um, SUV to begin with. An arch over here never looked quite good on this car. This is kind of like a Toyota Sienna design and it never looked quite right in the Highlander. I don't mind the rear design. I don't even mind the front design, but overall there's something a little bit odd about the Highlander as a three row SUV. It doesn't look as expensive and it just looks like um, a bit of an awkward design. So I wasn't surprised when Toyota decided to take a fresh view at the Grand Highlander by making sure that almost every panel, every piece of the car was changed. So what do you mean by a larger version of a Highlander? Well, it's a bit dis deceiving because what they've done is to keep some of the major components intact. So what you will see here underneath is what we call the underbody. There is a, a structural piece underneath here that connects the front under and what we call the rear under. These three pieces make up the majority of the structural part of the vehicle and then on top you add the body, literally on top of the structurally rigid underbody. And that's how you build a car. But in the case of a Grand Highlander, if you simply cut this part here and make this a little bit longer, actually the Grand Highlander is 6.5 inches longer to be exact, well it's going to look awkward because the design doesn't fit in in terms of front, rear, or even from a side profile. So what they've done is, yeah, they have kept the basic underbody structure. That's the most expensive part to re-engineer. They stretched that longer, and then almost every single panel to do with the Highlander have been replaced with a new design. So the front hood, the front fender, the front door, the rear door, the rear quarter panel, and obviously the roof have all been changed when the rear too. So none of these panels can be reused because the entire design has been modified. So from an engineer's perspective, we no longer say that is simply a slightly stretched version of this model. We actually would denote the Grand Highlander as an all new model that simply shares the platform underneath, but pretty well everything else to do with the car has been changed all around. Because the powertrain and so forth are also shared between the new Highlander and the new Grand Highlander, it is also not completely new and instead we say it's a shared platform. But the most interesting thing about the Grand Highlander is because it's called Grand Highlander versus the Highlander, most people assume they simply took this basic body, stretched a bit, changed the front end, and call it a day. Well, no, that is definitely not true. But if you look carefully, the hood design has been changed, 
This part is also different as I pointed out earlier. This is different, this is different. This whole side profile is different and therefore the roof is different and so is the tail end as well as the tail lamp. So when you begin to change these components, both the metal piece and the plastic pieces, you have to retool everything. So while they can still be built on the same line because underneath the car is similar, uh, they are actually very distinctively different. And so that's what makes it very interesting for me as an engineer looking at the Grand Highlander. The Toyota took a very fresh approach to designing that vehicle and basically ditched all of these exterior panels and redesigned everything. That also means everything to do with engineering like a crash worthiness, emission controls, all that will be affected and they have to retest and recertify that Grand Highlander because the crash performance and uh, all of the other performance characters will change. Uh, even the inside is different as well. Although there was nothing wrong with the Highlander inside, it's also beginning to look a bit outdated. So Toyota redid almost everything. The seat, all the center console is different, the dash is different, and there's not a single piece that I can tell here that is 100% shared across with the Highlander. As always, Toyota is very clever in engineering, so small things like the door handle, the power window switch, you know, the locking mechanism, uh, the switch for uh, mirrors, that kind of stuff is always shared, not just between the Highlander and the Grand Highlander, but also among many Toyota models. So those kind of switches will always be shared, and some of the infotainment system will be shared in the newer models. But other than that, the interior is all new, you get way more space in the back, and therefore, engineering-wise, the Grand Highlander is a remarkable piece of work because they had to redesign almost everything. It also means that because the body has been completely re-engineered and almost every piece is all new, they have to recalibrate the suspension, the transmission, the engine calibration, all that have to be different from the normal Highlander, even if it shares a powertrain, because the weight is different, the length is different, the drivability is different, and therefore everything has to be recalibrated. In fact, I know for a fact the suspension in the back is very different from the current Highlander, and even the front suspension has been revised to accommodate bigger weight and larger uh, dimension. So it's very fascinating for me that Toyota was able to take a much more drastic approach in creating Grand Highlander, and that signals to me how important that model is because it's at the very top of the flagship for Toyota in terms of a three-row SUV, and much more important than Sequoia, which is not selling too well, and will continue to stay as a niche model because that thing is very expensive and also uh, quite heavy being a body-on-frame SUV. So the Sequoia has its own place in the market, but the Grand Highlander, that's the new up-and-coming model that could dramatically change the way Toyota handles SUV market because it's such an important model with so much potential for growth. They already sell a huge number of Highlander as well as the smaller sibling RAV4. Uh, so no wonder that Toyota has designed the Grand Highlander to have a combination of design with the current Highlander and the current RAV4. It's kind of a mixture of the two model design because they don't want to upset the loyal Highlander customers, but they also want to accommodate RAV4 owners who is moving up to a larger SUV. And that's why the Grand Highlander kind of looks like a larger version of a RAV4. I'm not surprised by the choice of that design. Now getting back to the difference between the Highlander and the Grand Highlander, well the Grand Highlander is believe it or not 6.5 inches longer than this Highlander here, 7 inches shorter than Sequoia, so it's actually very very long and big. The wheelbase is a four inches longer than this Highlander. Even the height is different. It's actually two inches taller in the Grand Highlander compared to this one. And it's also 2.3 inches wider this way. So the Grand Highlander is actually substantially bigger overall, which is exactly what they wanted to do because that's what the consumers want in the large three row SUV. Even though this one is also a three row SUV, it was a lot of compromise in terms of the rear space because the second row of seat is actually very roomy, no problem at all with this seat, very comfortable, still lots of space. But the third seat, which I have it folded down right now, is, you know, kind of manageable and it's fine for younger kids, but adults can't sit there for a very long time because it's just a little bit too small. But the Grand Highlander with 6.5 inches longer this way, also wider and taller, 
has so much more space in the rear and also a lot more space in the trunk capacity as well. Now if you look at the current normal Highlander, the cargo space is actually quite good. It's very long and pretty wide and actually almost completely flat. So in many ways it's better than Sequoia, which has an awkward cargo area. But when the third seat is up, then the space is quite limited. It's still somewhat usable, but um, you can't put much um, luggage in there. But for the Grand Highlander, even when the third seat is up, it's got a lot of space and a lot of capacity for putting luggage and groceries and everything else. So the Grand Highlander definitely has a very promising way to take care of the customers and families when they're traveling. They can put so much in stuff in the back and still have a comfortable third seat. So it's a big difference for the Grand Highlander thanks to much larger interior and exterior dimension. And by the way, what I heard from Toyota engineers is that because they redesigned the suspension and the calibration of all things to do with the driving character, the Grand Highlander is supposed to drive quite a bit more luxurious than the Highlander. Now, none of us have driven the Grand Highlander and we wouldn't have that chance for a few more months still. But that's what I heard, that the Grand Highlander will be smoother, more refined, much more comfortable and will drive and feel different than the Highlander that we have right now. To be honest with you, we've had this car for three years now and it's actually surprisingly good. It's definitely an underappreciated and undervalued SUV because in many ways it drives much better than the 4Runner that I have. It's smoother, uh, better on-road capability, better handling and actually quite predictable and balanced. So it's not bad at all as a three-row SUV. It's just that it's a little bit smaller than it needs to be in terms of interior dimension. So I can only imagine what the Grand Highlander will be like because it's going to be even smoother and even more refined than this Highlander. It's going to be a benchmark in the industry. Uh, so the Grand Highlander should uh, perform and provide uh, refinement feel and comfortable feel that is uh, maybe one or two notches above this Highlander, which is already quite good. So I'm really looking forward to Grand Highlander and I'm thinking of trading this one in and buying the grand version because it's definitely worth paying that much more money to get a lot more of everything in terms of interior dimension and also likely better ride and handling as well. The only disappointing thing is that this one still comes with a V6 engine that we have the 3.5 liter and actually works really well in this Highlander. So I'm still disappointed that Grand Highlander, such a large vehicle, still can only be equipped with a 2.4 turbocharged four-cylinder uh, with or without hybrid or 2.5 four-cylinder and, and not V6 engine anymore. So I would say that's still a bit of a disappointment, not in terms of the you know, power and torque that it can provide, but just the overall feel, I think, for a large SUV uh, V6 engine and the way it feels is still kind of a preferred uh, driving character as far as I'm concerned. So that's one disappointment for me. But once again, none of us have driven the Grand Highlander, so we have to reserve our judgment until such time that we have a chance to drive the new one. Don't think of a Grand Highlander as a stretched version of a Highlander. No, it's not. It's much more than that. It is an all-new vehicle with all-new panels and different design inside and out. And the only thing that's sharing with the current Highlander is a basic platform underneath and then some of the technology and also the basic powertrain. But everything else is new, indicating that Grand Highlander is basically all new vehicle. And I think it's more of a desired car than something like a Sequoia, which is even bigger and heavier and honestly not much roomier than the Grand Highlander. So I think the new um, Grand Highlander holds a sweet spot in the three-row SUV market. And it's something that people have been asking for for a long time. So it should do really well. I'm also looking forward to seeing the TX version from Lexus that's based on the Grand Highlander. And that should be an amazing vehicle because you're going to get that extra luxury as well. And we are even hearing rumors that um, there will be a new Toyota Century SUV, most likely just for an Asian market, that is going to be based on the Grand Highlander and uh, even using the same powertrain as well. So that will be another exciting vehicle to think about. We probably won't get that here since we don't get the Century here, but who knows, you never know, at some point we might get the Century or Century SUV here in North America. But for now, I wanted to show you and explain to you how the engineering method and engineering approach works in the two vehicles between the Highlander and the Grand Highlander. I hope this was helpful for you guys. If so, please give me a thumbs up, make some comments, 
and subscribe if you can. Thank you so much. Until next video, I'm signing off for now.